There's a movie scene that loops around in my head before I fall asleep, where a couple is sitting side by side, cross-legged on their bed, reading from a thick book of lists upon lists of potential names. On their nightstand is a small pile of paint chips, choosing the perfect color for their child to wake up to after they are placed in the cr their cradle for the first time. The camera dances around this family like a mobile as they hold each other close. Everything is blanketed in happiness and tenderness and warmth. My friend once told me that when you go to the doctor's appointment that will prescribe your chance of bearing children, that you dress like a rock star. This is what helped her feel better when preparing for hearing the worst news. Don a leather jacket. Wear your darkest shade of lipstick. Blast your favorite music on the car ride home. The sound waves vibrating out the visions of the suburban house with the white picket fence and the dog in the backyard. The ones of having a family within walking distance of the elementary school. That the throb of the percussion pounding through your speakers will be the closest you will ever get to feeling another heartbeat. That your dream of becoming a parent seems so distant and nostalgic like the home you grew up in. The baby carriage with your doll tucked inside side is now rolling down the sidewalk and out of your reach. The cries of your newborn child crying in the nursery have turned to static. Your part as mother in this game of house feels like a pretend role you were handed a script for but may never be able to act out. That you will just have to keep playing pretend. It is hard to collect yourself and remember that there are other options. When your emotions want to unravel like scrapbook bindings or memories on a VHS tape, do not look at your body like, like it is shrapnel or a skipping record, scratching over the same unanswered questions. My health has always been in question. A curling spine with rolling veins and twisted organs swimming in a hospital bed sheets. My genetics with fragmented chromosomes and my bent shoulder do not make me broken. Even if I have snapped my own heart like a pencil, fearing that I may not be able to carry the weight of my future children. How I have picked myself apart like a rough draft. I am 19 now and I found myself terrified of the inside of my own skin, lucky enough to not have severe conditions but still paranoid about the potential of my future everything, hoping that when I tell the man I fall in love with that poetry may be the only life I could bring into this world, that he will not let go of my hand, that he will not look at my body and see a graveyard filled with unmarked headstones that he will not see the IV needles, stomach bile, emergency rooms, and apologies to my mother, that we will both see each other as two people full of learning how to heal and forgive, neither of us far from empty.